But today we're going to take a look at how competition shapes communities. And we'll also focus on what types of relationships exist between different organisms. Um, first, we have to understand this concept of a niche. Um, a niche is the range of physical and biological conditions in which a species lives and the way the species obtains what it needs to survive and reproduce. Um, you can think of a niche as being the role that an organism plays um, in its community. So for example, plants have the, the role of providing um, a source of, of, of energy or food for the herbivores that, that eat them. Um, plants, plants' niche is also, or role is, is also to, to convert light energy into sugar energy. So an organism's niche is the, is, is the role or the position that it plays um, in the environment. Um, to get some more information, you can go to the textbook and take a look at uh, pages 100 and 101 um, for some further information on this concept of the niche. Now, competition is an important concept in an environment, in an ecosystem as well. So when organisms attempt to use the same resources in the same place at the same time, there's going to be competition um, that exists. So, for example, plants are going to compete for, for water and nutrients in the soil, right? There's a limited amount of um, water and nutrients in an area, so these plants are going to compete for that. Uh, you don't necessarily always think about plants competing. You think of usually of animals competing, but all organisms are competing for resources. Um, so yes, animals also do compete for, for food, for water, for, for mates, for reproduction, for habitat. Um, so there's going to be this, this competition that, that exists um, in an environment because of these limited resources. Um, and this idea is related to the competitive exclusion principle, which is basically saying that no two species can occupy exactly the same niche, the same role that they, that they have in exactly the same habitat at exactly the same time. Okay, because um, there's, there's always going to be this, this competition. Um, now, we spoke before about all the different um, organisms uh, that that exist in an environment, in an ecosystem, the different types of organisms. Um, and there are certain relationships uh, that, that are established as a result of all of these different organisms. Now, um, many of you are familiar with the, the typical predator-prey uh, relationship. Um, and that's where an, an animal, such as um, also known as a predator, captures and feeds on other animals um, its, its prey. So you think of it you know, like um, in the jungle, if you have like a, a lion and an antelope, you think of the lion uh, clearly as being the predator and the antelope um, as being the prey. Um, so predators are going to affect the size of the prey population and determine where they live. Uh, the prey is going to, you know, try to avoid the predator. So depending on how many of these predators there are, um, in the environment, it's definitely going to, to dictate um, the, the population of the prey. Um, there are also other relationships. Once again, we don't think of these types of relationships as much, but there's also relationships between herbivores, which are plant-eating organisms like cows and deer, um, and the, the types of plants that they eat. Okay, so um, that relationship refers to the interaction between these organisms, these herbivores, and once again, the, the plants that they feed on. Um, and just like the way that the predators affect the size of the prey population, the herbivores are also going to affect the size of the plant population and determine where they grow. Um, now, there's also an interesting organism in an environment known as the keystone species. And what that is, it's the it's the species that can cause like the, the most dramatic changes. It has like a very big, big impact on the structure of the community. 
So all organisms are important and they all play a specific role in the environment. But there's some organisms that just are a little bit more critical to the structure of the community. So these organisms are referred to as keystone species. And one example of that is, is a sea otter. Okay, and, uh, you can refer to your, your text um, for some further information of you know, why these organisms are so critical, but essentially it's because they have such a dramatic impact effect on the community. Um, now there, there are other relationships that, that, um, that are established uh, between different species. Um, and these relationships are referred to as symbiosis. Uh, so symbiosis is basically, once again, any relationship in which two species live closely together. And there are different types of symbiosis. Um, there's mutualism, parasitism, and commensalism. Now, mutualism is when both species benefit. Each of them gets something positive out of their relationship. Um, then there's parasitism, where one organism benefits and the other one is harmed. Uh, the one that benefits is referred to as a parasite, and the one that's harmed is referred to as a host. And then the last type of symbiosis is something uh, referred to as commensalism. And that's when one organism benefits, they get something out of it. Um, and then the other one, it doesn't benefit, but it's also not harm either. Okay, so it's just sort of just there. It's neither harm, um, nor does it receive any benefit. So an example of um, these types of symbiosis. So, um, so for example, for mutualism, an example of mutualism would be the relationship between the sea anemone, um, which is this plant looking organism, even though it's not a plant um, there, it's, it's actually an, a simple animal. Um, and the, the clownfish that you see here. Okay, so, so if you take a look at this relationship, the sea anemone is providing sort of a protection for the clownfish. Um, uh, that's there. And then the clownfish is also going to provide some benefit to the sea anemone because um, it's going to it's, it's going to get some basically some some food and any of the, the scraps um, of food that the clownfish doesn't eat, the sea anemone actually absorbs through openings um, at the at the top there. So they're both getting something out of it. The, the clownfish is getting protection and the sea enemy is getting some of the scraps of food that's left over. Um, a, a common example of parasitism would be between a leech um, and a human. So in this case, the, the leech would be the parasite and the human would be the host. Uh, the, the leech basically feeds off of the human, it sucks some of the blood um, from the human, um, and the human um, is, is harmed. And, you know, the, the human can, you know, can suffer injury, illness, sickness. Um, so in that case, the, the, once again, the leech benefits and the human is harmed. Um, and then an example of commensalism um, would be the relationship between barnacles, which are these creatures that attach themselves on a top of an organism like a whale. Okay, so in this case, the barnacles are benefiting because any, you know, food that the whale is, is getting there, the, the barnacles will, you know, get any of the scraps, um, you know, that type of thing. Um, you know, the barnacles are also getting some, you know, some protection and a, and a free ride, um, basically. Whereas the, the whale, it's not physically harmed by the barnacles being attached to it, and it's not receiving any benefit.
benefit there. So sort of a think of it as a, like a one-way relationship there where the barnacles are getting um, all of the benefit in this situation. Okay, so uh, what you're going to do now is work on a series of problems. So um, I'm going to give you guys some, some handouts, some worksheets to see if you can um, put some of this uh, information into practice now. Okay, thanks.